I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. A few weeks ago I've opened an email address for you guys to submit your question, send comments and even suggest topics you'd like me to cover in future episodes. So far I've received hundreds of emails and among them one came from Santosh who lives in California in San Jose near San Francisco. Santosh wants to invest in his very first DSLR but does not know which camera body to choose or which lens to choose. Well, I've attempted to answer Santosh's question with two videos. The first one has already been published, that's how to choose your first DSLR camera body, and today I'm tackling the lens aspect. When it comes to lenses, there are really two critical pieces of information that you need to bear in mind. The first one is that while we have four major brands for DSLR, uh, being Canon, Nikon, Pentax and Sony, you cannot get a lens from Canon and make it fit a Nikon, Sony or Pentax camera body and vice versa. So that is the first aspect. The second one is about the size of your sensor in your camera body. As we saw, there are two types of um, camera bodies. There is the full frame sensor camera body and the crop sensor camera body. Well, several years ago, lenses manufacturers started making lenses specifically for crop sensor camera bodies. And while you can still use full frame lenses onto your crop sensor uh, camera body, you cannot use a crop sensor lens for um, a, a full frame camera body. The reason being is that if you were able, because most of the time you wouldn't, but if you were able to somehow attach that cropped um, sensor lens onto a full frame camera, because there is less glass than in a full frame uh, lens, what you're ending up with when you look at your exposure is you're going to have very strong vignetting around, um, around the edges. And that is simply because you're, in your full frame camera you have a big sensor and because the lens is smaller, the, the glass element inside the lens is not as wide, it does not capture as much information and therefore the whole surface of the sensor in a full frame camera body is not being filled by that light information and that's why you have that dark, um, those dark edges which is called vignetting. Then when again with lenses there are really two factors that really characterize a lens. The first one is the focal lens and the, the, the second one is the aperture or more precisely the widest aperture that lens can offer. Focal lens. You heard me saying that I had um, a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, I've used that lens numerous times for the episodes. In fact, most of the time I actually shoot and record the episodes with it. But you saw me mentioning it more precisely when I did the video on the creative aspect of the aperture and how uh, it affects the depth of field. Well, when we say 50 millimeter lens, well, that 50 millimeter value is in fact the focal lens. And the focal lens is simply the distance from the glass element inside your lens to the sensor inside your camera body. And one piece that is very important is that for example, this lens is made for full frame cameras and my Canon 60D is a crop sensor camera so I can still use it. But what is very important to bear in mind is that if when I put a 50 millimeter lens onto a full frame camera, it remains a 50 millimeter lens. If I put it on the crop sensor camera, it remains a 50 millimeter lens. However, what changes because some people may have heard differently. What really changed is the field of view. So what is the field of view? The field of view is simply when you take an exposure, how much of the scene before you is being captured onto the exposure. And so when you have a full frame camera, the sensor being wider, you are basically going to capture a bigger field of view, a wider field of view than a crop sensor using the same lens. So that is the only difference between using that lens on a crop sensor camera or on the full frame camera. This is it. The second um, factor that really characterizes a lens, as I said, is the widest aperture that a lens can offer. You heard me saying that this lens is a, is a Canon 50mm 1.8 lens. 
Well, that 1.8, this is the maximum aperture this lens can offer. And that may change. So, like for example, Canon does another lens, uh, actually two other lenses for with the same focal lens being 50 millimeter. The next one is a 50 millimeter 1.4, meaning that the aperture, the maximum aperture the lens can offer is bigger than my 1.8. And subsequently, the third one is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2 L lens. L standing for the L series that I already mentioned in the past, standing for luxurious lens. And it's a 1.2, so even wider as the widest one. And while the widest aperture is a sign of great quality, bear in mind that this will affect seriously the price of your lens. I may have told you that this lens is one of the cheapest one you can find uh, in the Canon range. And even, I believe, for Nikon and Sony and Pentax, the 50 millimeter lens is the cheapest one you can get. However, while this one costs about 100 pound, the 1.4 is about roughly 250, nearly 300 pound, whereas the 1.2 is 1200 pounds. So you can see the real, real impact of the aperture that has the aperture on the final price of your lens. Maybe you remember when we talked about DSLR's camera body, we came up with three categories, the entry level, the mid-range, semi-pro, and the professional cameras. Well, with lenses, you can find three categories as well. However, they're not based on prices or on quality, but more on what they enable you to achieve. Let's talk about the first one being a standard lens. A standard lens is like my 50 millimeter lens. It's basically, if I take this lens and I attach it to a full frame camera and I take an exposure of my subject and I look at the resulting image. When I look at my subject on my image, it won't be more magnified than what I see with my own eyes when I look at the subject. So a standard lens is a lens that does not offer either a magnification or a shrinkage of your subject or scene. That is a standard lens. And I mentioned on the full frame camera because as you know, if I put this 50 millimeter lens onto my crop sensor, the sensor being smaller than the full frame, the field of view will be narrower and because it will be narrower, it will magnify the uh, subject in front, of, uh, in front of the camera and therefore that's what you get in the, in the final exposure. So that's the standard lens. Then there's another type of lens and that is the telephoto lens. And a telephoto lens is a lens that when you take an exposure with, your subject or scene that is before you will basically appear bigger than what you see with your own eyes. And by appearing bigger, basically you can um, capture things that are very far away from you and when things are farther from you they appear smaller. Well because with this telephoto lens what appears smaller with your eyes will appear bigger with that lens making it look like if you actually captured it from a closer distance. And those are lenses uh, part of the telephoto lens category. And the third category, the last one, is the wide angle lenses and it's quite the opposite of a telephoto lens. It's basically Rather than magnifying your subject or scene that is before you, you're actually shrinking it. By, so by making your subject or scene smaller, you end up being able to put more in your image. Give, and that gives you an appearance of covering a wider angle and increasing your, the, the width of your field of view. And those are wide angle lenses. We've just covered the three categories. However, there is two groups on top of it. One is the prime lens, the second one is zoom lens. So what is a prime lens? Well, a prime lens is a lens that only offer one single focal lens, meaning that you can only achieve the very same field of view each time you use it. And that is like my 50 millimeter lens. It's only one single focal lens that is 50 millimeter. Then you have the other group the group of the zoom lenses. Well, a zoom lens is a lens that offers you multiple focal lengths. And for example, my 18 
135 millimeter is a zoom lens. So to not be confused between zoom lens and telephoto lens and I'm, I'll get back to that in a second. When you have a lens saying that it's 18 to 135 it's basically telling you that the widest field of view being the smallest focal lens is 18 and then you can extend that focal lens to 135 by simply zooming and so you can have multiple focal lengths throughout that range so starting from 18 to 135 so I can choose 50 I can choose 85 I can choose anything between 18 to 135 and that's what a zoom lens is so I've just said to you do not be confused between zoom lens and telephoto lens simply because we often hear people saying oh you have a big zoom just because they look at a big lens well not really because while zooming implies magnification it does not necessarily mean that, that that level of magnification is going to be more than the magnification of your own eyes for example I'm about to purchase my very first wide-angle lens and that lens is 10 to 22 millimeter well from 10 to 22 millimeter because it offers multiple focal lengths then that lens that wide angle lens is a zoom lens however being only 20 at the maximum magnification and we know that 50 is the equivalent to human eye magnification therefore that lens is not a telephoto lens but is well a wide angle lens so really do not be confused with that however you can do you can have um, telephoto lenses that are zoom lenses for example I have also as well the lens that I'm currently using is an 80 to 200 well at 80 we already beyond the 15 millimeter magnification level so that is a telephoto lens only if it was even if he had um, 80 as the single focal lens being a prime lens it would be a telephoto lens however because I have a range of focal lens available with that lens from going from 80 millimeter to 200 millimeter then that makes actually 250 that makes a zoom lens but also a telephoto lens so I hope it's a little bit clearer now You may notice sometimes when you look at DSLR camera bodies out there on the market, you look at prices and suddenly you see, wow, that DSLR is great because it comes with a lens and it's pretty cheap. Well, do not be fooled by that because those lenses is what we call kit lenses and they are very cheap. So it's, it might appear like a nice real bargain uh, when you buy the DSLR and the lens with it as a bundle but as a matter of fact you know manufacturers they're not that stupid and if they put a lens with the price of the camera and you see that there's no much difference in price between the camera body itself and the camera body plus that uh, um, kit lens then the kit lens does not worth much and as a matter of fact you can barely uh, you can't barely see any kit lens uh, for sale on um, on eBay because they're worth absolutely nothing not even 100 pounds so kit lenses usually are offering um, they are zoom lenses and they're offering a focal lens range between 18 to, to 55 millimeter and they're not that good quality they're pretty much made out of all plastic the screwing mount uh, is all plastic uh, the glass itself is not very nice quality it won't give you a very sharp image so I don't really recommend you guys to unless you have a very tight budget and you really want to go for for uh, for DSLR as soon as possible and you you want to you want the lens to use it obviously then yes go for it however you know if you ready to spend a little bit more money then try to buy either your camera body on his own and a different lens uh, a better lens and that's what I actually did uh, when I bought my Canon 60D the Canon 60D unlike the other model um, you could buy it with either the kit lens the 1855 millimeter which is rubbish as I just mentioned or 
um, a higher level lens uh, and that is the 18 to 135 and yes this is the one you also have um, the choice with another lens which is 18 to 200 millimeter and that offers you a, a wider um, choice of focal lens however in terms of quality it's really equivalent to the 18 135 this lens is really good also with the options that it gives you not only it gives you the usual autofocus manual focus uh, switch that is here but it gives you the image stabilizer option which is here that you can turn on and off on that particular lens it will correct any camera shake going vertical or horizontal and that is pretty good when you shoot with um, as in the telephoto mode meaning that it's a focal lens beyond the 50 millimeter and uh, where your field of view is so narrow that um, the camera shake are very easy to uh, identify and occur so this is it for that lens and it's a nice lens because it's what I call a work or a walk around lens because if you have only one lens to carry with you then you might as well have a lens that has that has uh, a lot of focal lens to offer just like this 18 135 if you want a wide angle 18 is not that bad and then you have 50 for kind of a portrait without any magnification and then you have 135 uh, if you want to shoot something that is far away you heard me saying at the beginning of this episode that once you've chosen your camera body or the brand of your camera body, you're pretty much tied to that brand when it comes to lenses. Well, it's absolutely true. However, there are other um, lens manufacturers out there, third-party manufacturers, that will make lenses that will fit either Canon, either Nikon, Sony or Pentax. And just to name three of them, we have Sigma, Tamron and Tokina. And as a matter of fact, my um, wide angle lens that just uh, confessed that I was planning on buying is a Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter that is made to fit Canon. However, I do know that there is the same lens um, from Sigma with the same focal lens range, uh, but it's made to fit uh, a Nikon camera. So what about quality? Well, interestingly enough, the quality of third party lenses um, does not differ that much from big brand like Canon, Nikon, Pentax and Sony. And if I decided to go for the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter, it's not that there was no equivalent uh, from Canon. As a matter of fact, there is. There is the 10 to 22 millimeter from Canon. However, when reviewing the details, the specs and reading many reviews about um, the Canon lens uh, versus the Sigma lens, I decided that it was well recognized that the Sigma lens was uh, much better than the Canon one. But the very nice thing about third party lenses is the price. You will always find those lenses much cheaper than a Canon. And as a matter of fact, that Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter is roughly about two to 300 pound cheaper than the Canon lens. And inside those uh, third-party lens manufacturers, you, they also have different quality of lenses. And for that Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter, there was um, one model that they released a few years ago. And that model offered the same focal lens, so 10 to 20 millimeter. However, when you look at the widest aperture the lens would offer, it would only offer you four um, on the 10 millimeter focal lens and 5.6 when you were using that lens at 20 millimeter. Well, they just released another model, which is still 10 to 20 millimeter in terms of focal lens range. But when you look at the widest aperture you can offer, when you're at 10, you can use it at 3.5. And when you are at 20, you can still use it at 3.5. And suffice to say that this lens is the newest one. It's been, um, many uh, improvement in terms of the glass, it's better quality, uh, the corrected distortion and other side effects of wide angle lenses. And that lens is more expensive than the old model. However, it's much cheaper than the Canon one. So all that for saying so that you can trust third party lenses. And to make your choice easier, 
there are many websites out there just like for camera bodies in fact pretty much the same one for camera body will review lenses as well and just like i did in the previous episode you can find on my blog my three favorite websites that i use what about secondhand lenses well it's the same as camera body um, when you buy any secondhand item you never know um, what they're worth you know you see the price you see pictures but it's not always um, true to their real condition on how they've been taken care of in the past well with lenses there's a few things to bear in mind uh, the first one is lenses needs to be taken care of uh, you need to make sure there is no scratches you need to make sure there is no dent you need to make sure that they never fail uh, you need to make sure that the either the manual uh, focus ring or the zoom ring is not cranking uh, what else you need to make sure as well that there is not too much dust in lenses although dust is always bound to happen and we'll do an episode on this um, what else you can find the fungus as well in lenses so all these kind of things make it very very difficult to actually trust uh, purchasing secondhand gear especially if you're buying online if you're buying from somebody living in the same town or somebody you know then you can just inspect that lens and make sure that it's okay but buying online makes it very difficult so watch out if you buy from eBay the option that I've given you for the camera body when buying secondhand is still worth for the uh, lenses as well many shops out there will offer you secondhand gears um, and as I said before buying those gears from the initial uh, owner they would have done a whole checkup on the lens on the gear and so you can pretty much um, trust if you trust the store then you can trust them in the uh, in the quality they're trying to sell you as secondhand gear so let's review the whole process of choosing your first lens first you bought your camera body from that you will know which mount uh, your lens needs to have then after that you need to know what type of photography you want to do whether it's wildlife photography where you would need uh, a telephoto lens and same for sport photography or if you need only to do portrait and walk around lens and you pretty much taking what you see then a standard lens might be enough or if you want to capture buildings or landscape or if you want to do real estate photography where you need to make a lot of things in your image having a very wide field of view then a wide angle lens is more appropriate once you've chosen that then you need to go on those website or at the store and compare really all the models that are out there and compare it uh, using the spec that we just mentioned what uh, focal lens range the lens offer what aperture what the widest aperture the lens offer what budget obviously uh, you have at this point when it comes to the lens and one very important thing is really once you think that you are quite interested with one or two models really try to find a store out there in your town and go try the lens bring your sd card you can even bring your own camera and well obviously no because you don't have the the, the camera body but the shop will have a dslr camera body to uh to to, to uh, understand so you can look at the lens feel how it is uh, try it and record on that sd card and then when you're back home you just check the result check different focal lens how the zoom works uh, and all the, the the features on the lens so really that's the whole process and at the end we'll either buy it from that store or go online to try to find a bargain and this is really it there is much more detail because obviously this is just a video and but there's a lot more detail on my blog about lenses i might not have covered all there is to know about lenses and if that's the case well you know the email address to ask your question ask tmp at gmail.com and until next time this is tommy god saying if you like it well capture it <laughs>